The Trump appointed judge Matthew Kazimark is very close to making a decision on the abortion pill, whether or not to ban it. Um, again, this is for mifepristone, which is used in many or most medicated abortions, which by the way, is a large majority of abortions in this country. He himself, Kazmark, is a noted anti-choicer who has a long storied history. It's probably why he was appointed by Donald Trump in the first place. Um, but this week he had hearings and it's not as much of a shoe in for these anti-choicers as they thought it would be when it comes to banning mifepristone. During a four hour hearing, US District Judge Matthew Kazimark appeared sympathetic to arguments from the lawyers for a coalition of anti-abortion groups, obviously, called the Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine. Their goal in filing the suit was to overturn the Food and Drug Administration's approval of the pill used to terminate pregnancies, which accounted for more than half of abortions in the US. In Wednesday's hearing, attorneys for both sides largely focused on the FDA's regulatory and approval process and didn't mention abortion or access or when life begins. Kazmark seemed to offer plaintiffs more windows than the defense to clarify and elaborate on their arguments, especially those related to the FDA's approval process and the scope of a potential injunction. Um, so that makes sense that he would give more word and weight to the plaintiffs in this case um, because he sides with them generally. And again, mind you, they are going about this not on not on a religious tip, not on any kind of right to life. They are saying the FDA shouldn't have approved this. You know, they are going about it through the bureaucratic channels, and you got you know like uh, hats off for trying, I guess. And uh, you might knock it out of the park on this one and screw it all for um, you know millions and millions of women across this country. Anyway, um, however. The judge did stump, this was fun that they didn't have a response to this, stumped the Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine, again, these anti-choicers. He stumped their lawyers when he asked if they could offer another example of a drug that after like 20 years in operation, um, whether another drug had been rescinded in terms of uh, its availability. And the answer was, no, I can't, replied Eric Baptist, senior counsel with Conservative Christian Legal Group, uh, Alliance Defending Freedom. As to why the legal challenge came so long after the drug's approval, Baptist blamed the FDA, saying it took the agency 14 years to respond to a citizen's petition raising concerns about mifepristone. Um, Ju Justice Department lawyer Julie Strauss Harris said the removing a drug that had been in safely in use for 20 years would be unprecedented. It's important to step back and think about what the agency did here, Harris said. The FDA did not require anyone to take it. They simply said it was safe and effective. Kazmark said he's likely going to um, rule very soon, which will probably be appealed. Um, it's a, it's gonna go to a bunch of other more, even more conservative courts. but. Jackson, what I love about this story is that he set his homies up. Like all these people he knows, he knows all these folks. They're all on the same side against women. Um, and he sets them up for a basic question like, can you name any other medication that was taken off the market after it was approved? And they're like, I didn't think you'd ask me a hard question. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, well, at the end of the day, you pointed it out perfectly. Uh, the reversal of Roe v. Wade and anti-abortion stances are just attacks against women. I mean, there are people who may honestly believe that it's murder if you take an abortion pill. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think they women typically take those pills up to like 11 weeks or you can take them up to 11 weeks. Um, but typically within the first month, they'll take them. Um, considering that a life and then going this hard to punish women, just for you know, maybe having an accident. You never know what you never know what happens. Women often don't even know. I've had experiences of this with with women I've been with in serious relationships. You never know. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it's like if your life isn't all together, bringing a child into the world isn't an easy thing. And tell me about you know, it. God forbid you have right. You got experience. With, you know. You know way more than I do. And you know, God forbid a, a woman you know gets uh, sexually assaulted or something like that, and it's against her will. Um, you know, I, I've, re I've read stories about ex-husbands who found out that their wives took a pill at some point and they're filing lawsuits against them. I mean, this yep. is literally insane and incredibly unproductive for society as a whole. Nothing good is coming from the reversal of Roe v. Wade, something that got passed in 73 during a time when we weren't as progressive as a country in general. So that really yeah. just goes to show what type of era we're in. One right. side is trying to move things forward and the other side is trying to move things backwards.
Right, and I think it's important to understand that mifepristone is incredibly safe. This is again, over half of abortions, you are medicated abortions. As Jackson mentioned, they are early, just like most abortions are early in the first trimester. And it it allows for people, especially who do not have medical access to a clinic, to many clinics that have been shut down, to clinics who have been subjected to all kinds of stipulations by their anti-choice legislators in their states, to have hospital admitting privileges and other insane things when abortions are routine procedures. Um, to say nothing of the people who do want to be pregnant and sadly are suffering miscarriages or have some sort of you know fetal abnormality or something is happening with putting their life or the life of the fetus at risk. However, if we need to say this, let's talk about mifepristone. What is the safety? Well, data from study from hundreds of studies and 23 years of approved use has shown that mifepristone is highly safe and effective according to 12 of the country's most most respected medical associations, including the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and the American Medical Association, which signed an amicus brief in the Texas case. Data analyzed by CNN shows that mifepristone is even safer than some of the most common prescription medications. Risk of death from penicillin, an antibiotic used to treat bacterial infections like pneumonia, for example, is four times greater than it is for mifepristone. And the risk of death after taking, wait for it, Viagra used to treat erectile dysfunction is nearly 10 times higher. And yet no one is rescinding Viagra, I wonder why, I wonder why. Rather surprising. I didn't read that that stat in the in the prep, uh, that one in particular. But that's incredibly surprising. I mean, not that I necessarily would have thought it was the reverse or something, but I didn't know that you had that big of a chance of, I guess, having a heart attack or something from taking Viagra. Right. That's I mean, the big. risk of it is ten times higher. It's still small because let's let's be real. Mifepristone that risk is also insanely small. So what are the adverse effects? They they say the adverse effects like blood loss, hospitalization, significant infection are exceedingly rare, happening in less than 03 percent of patients, according to medical associations. Right. So whatever, do that math. It's very little also that you could die from Viagra as well, but (laughs) even less from mifepristone. So we will see what happens. But like I said, y'all read up on Casmark. This is the reason why we actually need control of courts. This is why sadly, um, we are forced into doing things like holding our nose and voting for the lesser of two evil. Because when it comes to these federal levels, when it comes to presidential appointments of justices. We need people who are not going to take away rights that have been been in existence for 50 years, right? Like we need to be people who are not gonna take away meds that are necessary that have been in existence and use safely for 20 years. So this again, this is this is the this is where we're at. We don't deserve nice things until we can actually get the basic things. But we have to, I believe, Jackson, devolve into where we can only use stones and sort of bang them on different objects. <laughs> and before we can move forward again, we have, we, exa- we have to go many steps backwards before we go forward. Exactly, I believe that's a process. You know, Again, we undo the enlightenment, we go back <laughs> to the dark ages. Everyone's like just using latrines and has like gout. I guess go, go is, back to when everyone's a surf, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, everyone's a surf. Everyone's got like, I don't know, guys, what's a good old disease? The black Scurvy, plague. <laughs> plague. I mean, yeah. we had a plague already, so we're sort of going back there, you know? And then we have to rise, the surfs obviously yeah. have to rise up. It's a whole thing.